Being evil is amusing, sometimes even hilarious. You know, pushing children down slippery slopes, releasing killer pigeons in a Starbucks, triggering an alien invasion of South America, it's all fun and games. Until some brainless party pooper ruins everything by doing something extraordinarily stupid. Professionals have standards, real supervillains have ethics, morals, honor. But sometimes certain world leaders forget this point and mess up catastrophically in their pitiful attempt to gain power and authority. A bit of mischief and trickery is healthy. Shenanigans and devilry are fine. Being an arrogant prick is not. I know you're watching, shame on you! You ruined the reputation of the entire guild of villains. And oh, you made yourself a dangerous enemy. Do you know what aspiring absolute monarchs get? when they become too cocky? Regicide! The time has come to unleash my inner French revolutionary and fight back. As long as I live, no vile despot will oppress the masses. Except me. Of course, tremblez, tyranny vous perfide, because there's only one way to end this once and for all. A large number of beheadings. Let me introduce you to my record-breaking makeshift guillotine. It's highly engineered and perfectly optimized to be as small as possible and fit comfortably in a suitcase. This way I can easily export my newly founded reign of terror all over Europe. Look, it's the exact measurement of a human head. You couldn't make this an inch smaller. I am super proud of this. Also, yes, it's made of scrap materials and it looks horrible, but revolutionaries don't usually have time to go shopping at hardware stores, so I guess the post-apocalyptic look works fine. However, building a portable machine is easy, the hard part is to make it effective. I want this to look fancy on my desk, but also be functional. You never know when you have the chance to chop off a couple of monarchic heads. Since the blade is quite light and doesn't have much momentum, we will increase its destructive power with some heavy-duty rubber bands. A lot of them, if needed. I haven't tested it yet, so let me get hold of a prisoner. Uh -oh. Hi, Susa! So, apparently I can't broadcast public executions on YouTube, so we will have to test our machine on something less interesting than a human neck. <sighs> Sorry about that. Let's start with low power and slowly add more rubber bands as we go on, because I'm 80% confident that this thing will jam, implode or launch metal shards in all directions. Most likely all of these things at once. You know what? Better safe than sorry. I really don't trust my building skills and this could potentially be the most dangerous invention I ever built. It's surely one of the jankiest. Let's start with a squishy target to see what would happen to my fingers. And go! Okay, it worked. No food wasted. Next up, hardwood dowels. I usually cut them with a hand saw and I can assure you that these are quite tough for their size. Let's see what happens. It didn't go all the way through, but just because the copper blade bent. Ouch. More of a smash than a cut. But hey, I like smashing. Now let's try something even thicker and stronger. These are actually the bones of my, uh, well, I guess, now ex synthetic girlfriend. And Twitter, please, it's alright, I don't usually cut up my girlfriend. It's alright. Usually. <laughs> this is pretty indestructible, so I just want to see how much damage this thing really does. Three, two, one. Fuck. 
I know it doesn't look like much, but trust me, this is pretty massive. For comparison, this is the biggest knife I have, and it's sharp. And that's the result. Knife versus guillotine. Oh wow, this would be the shittiest sensation ever. Anyway, I'm a bit disappointed about the whole blade bending issue because it dissipated a lot of energy and made it impossible for me to unleash the true power of my contraption by adding more rubber bands. So that sucks. However, I'm already thinking about a new improved version, but it would require steel working tools that I currently do not have, so I guess it would be a project for a future video. The concept works, but it needs some more iteration. Back to Flanner showed me. Will this be enough to chop your head straight off? If you hit between the vertebrae, totally. Else, mm, I'm not really sure, but you will surely become one of the greatest cosplayer of nearly headless Nick. Très bien les amis, I think we messed around enough. Destroying stuff is always great fun, but it really makes you think about how squishy human bodies are. I don't want to get close to that thing ever again. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, share with your great grandma who misses the good old times of the revolution, all that stuff. By the way, I legally have to disclose that I do not condone violence in any way or form and that separating heads from the rightful body is wrong. Except when they belong to Ali. Thank you for watching. If you have a couple more minutes to waste, I handpicked two cool videos just for your enjoyment. Go ahead and watch both of them at the same time. Then click the notification bell or follow me on social media. That's the best way to interact with me directly. If for whatever reason you want to. As always, eat your vegetables and take care.